What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. So, keeping on with our whole X-Men chronology, for the next few videos, we're going to be covering Wolverine Origins, just because when you go through the chronological order of the X-Men, you pick up with, like, new X-Men, or I guess new mutants really is kind of what it is. It's really called new X-Men, but it's basically new mutants. You pick up with, like, uncanny X-Men, Fall of the Greys, and then you go into, like, three stories of Wolverine Origins. Now, this is kind of weird, because I feel like I've done this before. I know we did Origins and Endings, and that picks up immediately after House of M, and it's basically what happens when Wolverine first gains his memories back, which is kind of one of the after effects that happened. Instead of him losing his powers, he regained all his memories. But that goes into like the formation of the Muramasa Blade, which of course is one of the only blades that's out there that's capable of shutting off the healing factor of Wolverine if it's plunged into him and left there for any real measure of time. And so because of that, I was going through and I was like, dude, I feel like I've done this before. But I searched all over my channel and I haven't been able to find it. So it may just be one of those things where it's like I read through it a whole bunch of times or something along those lines and it just feels like deja vu. But regardless of the circumstance, Wolverine Origins by Daniel Way is one of these stories that Marvel produced where it got mixed reviews. On one side, you had Wolverine traditionalists, people who didn't want to see things change and who liked the way Wolverine had been progressed over the years in this publication. Wolverine Volume 1, Wolverine Volume 2, his run in Claremont's X-Men, all those different things that had been fleshed out, the Weapon X story, you know, the 12-issue limited series. On the other side, you had people who kind of said, Wolverine's origin is an absolute mess. Like, you have to go through all these comics. You have to read, you know, three, four hundred comics in order to be able to gain his overall origin. And so it's easier if it's all just in a concise location. Overall, the idea is that it does consolidate things. It basically goes through the whole origin of Wolverine, introducing his son, all the things he'd done in his past when he first met Deadpool. All those things go into this great big huge 50 some odd issue thing. I think it was 56 issues, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But it goes into all this stuff. But initially, this basically just kind of picks up with Wolverine kind of going on this mission of sorts. Because remember, with him regaining his memories, what Daniel Way does is he grabs a lot of the things that we know, and then he makes up things that we didn't know about, and then just kind of throws them all into this comic. And so what we actually end up doing here is picking up with a secretary of defense or whatever it is for the president of the United States. There we go. <laughs> and the whole idea behind this is that it basically just sort of coincides with Wolverine breaking into the White House. Now, this is a huge deal. The idea of Wolverine breaking into the White House is huge because it's designed to say two things. The first is that he's brazen, that he's really like a man on a mission. But the other half is to show the ingenuity, the stealth, the guile, and the kind of espionage that Wolverine's involved in. Because remember, for a guy that's lived for a couple hundred years, he's seen and done it all for the most part. I mean, he's fought in various wars. He fought alongside Captain America. He was part of Weapon X. He worked with the CIA as part of Team X. He's very well versed in how to infiltrate uh, places that are not supposed to be accessible. Now, all hands are on deck here. The President's Secret Service response, the military response, and SHIELD response. And so Wolverine has, in the blink of an eye, become the most wanted man in America by finding a way to get into the White House. At the same time, somebody fired a missile that offered some measure of a distraction. Now, it wasn't designed to actually hit the White House. The missile was basically designed to take everyone's attention away from the actions of Wolverine. So that's why it's kind of a big deal because when it comes to S.H.I.E.L.D., their main goal is to basically maintain safety in the United States, to monitor all these different threats, different things like that. And where Wolverine is a blip on a radar, where suddenly someone's in the White House that's not supposed to be there and the Secret Service is responding, a missile comes flying in. That's where everybody begins to panic and everybody begins to scramble. But with Wolverine making his way in there, what he immediately does is seemingly go after this second now, a lot of that's because of the fact that what's established here is that she's not supposed to be there, that she's basically working for another agency. Where Wolverine goes after her, he's basically met by the arrival of a Shiva, which was stationed inside the rocket, which crash landed on the grounds of the White House. Now, the Shivas are pretty interesting. They're basically robots, but they were designed for the purpose of tracking down and neutralizing members of the Weapon X program that went rogue. That's one of the reasons why Wolverine's memories were kind of scrambled for a time, is because over the course of the Weapon X project, what you had before Wolverine is you would have people who would be inducted into the project. Individuals would go in, they would receive whatever kind of training, something along those lines, and then at some point, their memories would come back to them. And when they did, they would basically defect from Weapon X. The Shivas would be tasked with finding them and either bringing them back in, if at all possible, or simply neutralizing them, i.e. taking them out. And so because of this, these Shivas are designed to withstand a pretty significant amount of punishment. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the Muramasa Blade, because it's designed to basically nullify healing factors, and it's kind of a combination of some of the hardest metals in existence, combined 
with a little bit of mysticism and magic and so on and so forth, makes pretty quick work out of this Shiva. The problem is that Wolverine comes to the realization whoever sent this Shiva was also the same person this secretary was working for. And so ultimately they end up taking her out. Now, in response to this, the federal government taking shield off the whole thing and saying, look, if you guys couldn't even stop a rocket from crash landing on the White House, then we're going to take things into our own hands. And the result is the federal government initiates the launch of Frank Simpson, also known as Nuke. Now, Nuke has been a long-standing member of the Marvel Comics landscape for, for a really, really long time. I mean, he's been around for, for ages and ages. And the cool thing about this is that he was always one of these guys that was kind of tied into the Weapon X project. And it really kind of goes back to like 1989 with Wolverine Volume 2 in terms of, you know, the, the kind of stories that dealt with a little bit of Wolverine's origin, different things along those lines. But again, this is designed to sort of consolidate all that information and bring it together in an easily accessible way. And so this is going to kind of retell the origin of Frank Simpson to a degree. But the idea here is that Frank Simpson is a guy over the course of his life, he's basically had various aspects of his body replaced with cybernetic implants. And so at this point in time, he's more machine than human, but he still functions according, according to the wishes of what the federal government wants to do. The other half of this is that instead of having him pop pills, which are something that he can either choose to do or choose not to do, what's happened here is they basically replace the red and the blue pills by putting in a second heart. And so what this does is it allows the government to remotely decide whether he gets amped up or whether he whether he calms down. Now, in terms of his actual origin, this is where things get kind of interesting. We actually sort of jump back to 1968 and the Vietnam War, and this is really just Wolverine operating as part of Weapon X. Remember, because Weapon X in its earliest days was kind of a joint venture between the CIA and uh, Canada's Department K, what this meant is that Wolverine as part of Weapon X would carry out missions for Weapon X. And the result was that during these early days when he was part of the Black Ops team, before he underwent the Weapon X project, that he was basically just kind of carrying out these various missions. One of these missions dealt with the idea of Frank Simpson being brought in and kind of being transformed into a sort of killer, where he was kidnapped uh, during the Vietnam War. And then you had Wolverine, who was part of the CIA and so on and so forth, operating as a Russian advisor for the, for the Viet Cong. What this meant was that he jumped in and started going through and torturing Frank Simpson. But while he was doing that, he was planting a keyword, which comes on the phrase of no VC. And what this means is that no VC was basically a way of saying, I'm not Viet Cong. The idea behind this was that by planting that phrase in there, Frank Simpson, when he hears the phrase no VC, will simply snap. He'll lose his mind and he'll just start killing everything in the vicinity. Again, because of this, what it also does is it picks up with the Silver Samurai conversing with the federal government. Now, Silver Samurai is a guy who's been around for a really, really long time. I want to say he was introduced in Daredevil number 11 back in like 1974, but he is a guy, and I can never pronounce his first name. So it's like, it's like Kinyu Ochi Harada, I think is how you pronounce his first name. I apologize if I butchered that. I've never been able to pronounce his first name, but Silver Samurai is actually the illegitimate son of a guy named Shinjin Harada. Now, uh, Shinjin Harada is actually the father of a woman named Mariko Yoshida. And Mariko Yoshida was at one point the uh, fiance of Wolverine. So it really all kind of goes back to Wolverine himself. Now, of course, Shinjin ultimately met his demise, which meant that Mariko became the head of Clan Yoshida. And then following her death, Silver Samurai took up leadership of the group. But the idea behind this is that Silver Samurai is very much honor bound. You know, he's really one of these guys where he sort of maintains this old school code of honor among his own people, as well as when he makes a vow of, si of silence, meaning that he won't tell anybody anything about what he's heard. He takes it to the grave. So he's like one of the most trustworthy people out there. The kicker to all this is that what he ends up doing is kind of spilling the beans to the federal government, not in terms of what he was asked not to tell, but what he was asked to tell in the sense that Wolverine basically says, look, tell them about the Muramasa blade and let them know what's going on. Because in the end, it doesn't matter. So this is really kind of like Wolverine taunting the feds in a lot of ways. Now, of course, Silver Samurai basically says, hey, look, there's this thing called the Muramasa blade. It's the only thing capable of destroying Wolverine. But he asked me to tell you this, which is why I'm telling you. It's kind of interesting because this doesn't, this doesn't really serve like any major purpose. It's just kind of, again, a little bit of a reminder that Wolverine's life and times span a great deal amount of time in Marvel Comics. And there's all of these different characters that he's impacted over the course of his life. Now, because of the fact that Nuke has been sent in, what this means is that it's Wolverine basically confronting Frank Simpson. Now, again, this really kind of hits home at the nature of the fact that Wolverine's regained all these memories from his own life. And so the reason why this matters is because him confronting Frank Simpson is not necessarily for the purpose of killing him, it's for the purpose of making amends. Because Wolverine was the one that transformed him into the person that he is. And the reason how that happened is it all really kind of goes back to the early days of his life. And this shows us how involved Wolverine and the CIA and, you know, Team X and even the early stages of the Weapon X project, it shows us how
how it all kind of came together. When Frank Simpson was a little kid, the government had basically targeted him for Project Homegrown. Now, in truth, there wasn't really a rhyme or reason for it. It was just, we need someone, and so this kid's gonna be it. What ended up happening is the whole Project Homegrown crew had basically grabbed this woman and threw her into Frank Simpson's family as a maid of sorts. Now, Frank Simpson himself was subject to a very, you know, drunk and abusive mother, and his father was more or less a coward. But the idea behind this was that because he had been targeted, this maid had been brought in for the purpose of surveying the family and deciding whether or not it was a good choice. And because of the fact that Frank Simpson in many ways came from a broken home, basically what it meant is that if his mother had died, if his father had died, then he would just kind of be out there and there would really not be anybody else. And so where this woman, this maid kind of, you know, subliminally implants this idea of you should take out your mom, it's kind of left out there in the background. And then of course, you know, where the father of Frank takes the maid back home, we end up having a uh, Wolverine show up who basically shoots the maid and then gives the gun to the father and saying, hey, look, this is your gun. It came from your house. The whole world is going to believe you killed this maid after trying to take advantage of her. And so the result is that the father of Frank Simpson turns the weapon on himself. Following this, Wolverine goes back to the house of Frank Simpson to find that the subliminal implants of this maid worked when Frank Simpson took out his mom. And so this basically leaves him an orphan in every single sense of the word and all loose ends are tied up. But because of the fact that this combined with Wolverine visiting Frank Simpson later on in his life when he had enlisted in the Vietnam War and then basically planted the subliminal wording into him basically meant that from the time he was a child until the time that he was an adult, Wolverine had quite literally crafted Frank Simpson into the person that he is. These, these memories sort of being restored back to Wolverine basically means he's trying to make amends here. But because of the fact that Frank Simpson spent so much of his life being mentally tormented and tortured by the federal government, being turned into a living weapon of sorts, having various biological parts of his body replaced with cybernetics means that he's almost completely inhuman now. And so as a response to this, because of the fact that this will inevitably result in the destruction of Frank Simpson, at least that seems to be the case. And because the feds, you know, basically invested $130 million in him, what they end up doing is sending Captain America in to neutralize Wolverine, to bring him in and to bring Frank Simpson back so that Frank Simpson can be recovered and he can still continue to be used as a weapon. Now, this is interesting because this basically pits a battle between Captain America and Wolverine. And this is actually a topic of a pretty big battle that still goes on on the internet. One of the big questions people ask is who would win in a fight, Wolverine or Captain America? Because where Wolverine has studied all manner of martial arts, he doesn't quite have the super soldier enhancements that Captain America has, meaning Wolverine's body is not pushed to the peak of physical perfection, and he certainly doesn't have the learning capabilities that Captain America has. At the same time, Wolverine's been around for a few hundred years, and so he does have all this wisdom and all this experience under his belt. And so even if they stand on equal footing, it does come by two different means. The cool thing about this is that what it does is it does actually put them on an equal footing. And that's what's cool about this, is it really just kind of says, hey, this is probably how this would turn out. Captain America and Wolverine fighting, at the end of the day, Captain America's not really better than Wolverine any more than Wolverine's better than Captain America. It's really just kind of the nature of who they are. Wolverine's healing factor combined with his adamantium, combined with all of his experience, puts him on par with Captain America, who's got a healing factor of his own, not quite on the same level as Wolverine, but you know, his enhanced ability and speed and reflexes and so on and so forth. And so the fight's pretty drag out. It's pretty knock down, drag out, and pretty brutal in a lot of ways. Now, of course, Frank Simpson, who's basically kind of like half a man at this point, really just kind of throws the Muramasa blade to Captain America, who in turn turns it on Wolverine. So this is kind of interesting because at this point, Wolverine doesn't have a whole lot of an opportunity here. Now, the other half of this is that when it comes to Marvel Comics with regards to Weapons Plus, we've talked about this before, so if you're familiar with this, bear with me for a second. Uh, when it comes to Weapons Plus, that's the Umbrella organization. Under Weapons Plus, you have Weapons 1 all the way up to 10, also known as Weapon X, and even beyond Weapon 10. You know, you have Weapons 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, different things like that. By and large, it was always believed that when it came to the Weapons Plus program, that it was all rooted on the nature of Captain America. Captain America was weapon one. And the goal up until they found Wolverine was to duplicate Captain America and create a version of himself. With Wolverine, it was weapon X. And because of his healing factor, combined with the fact that he was the first successful implantation of uh, adamantium to a person's bones grafted to their skeleton, the goal after Wolverine was to not duplicate Captain America. It was to duplicate Wolverine. One of the big controversies in the story is that it really kind of comes back and it says, no, Frank Simpson was designed to duplicate Wolverine. But that assumes that Wolverine came before Frank Simpson, which isn't necessarily true. And so because of this, it is kind of interesting because remember chronologically, Wolverine was weapon 10. Frank Simpson was weapon seven. So again, it is it is kind of weird. It's a little bit of, of a controversy here. I mean, it, it still works for the purpose that it serves, but it also kind of begs the question, how far along was the planning for the character of Nuke by the time he was brought into Project Homegrown? But again, it's Wolverine basically saying, hey, look, they weren't trying to duplicate you, Captain America. They were trying to duplicate me. But in truth, they were trying to duplicate Captain America. So again, one of those little oversights made by 
Daniel way with writing of this story. But the fact remains here, with Wolverine kind of, you know, using the distraction of Frank Simpson to overpower Captain America to take the Muramasa Blade, where it seems as though he's initially going to go after him, instead, we end up with the arrival of Cyclops, Hellion, and Emma Frost. But the whole idea behind this is that Emma Frost had previously tried to enter the mind of Wolverine while he was fighting Captain America. And the reason for that was because by going through and reading the mind of Wolverine, as well as kind of, you know, looking around the world, uh, looking around the world as it exists, Emma Frost started coming to these realizations that there's a whole other side of this equation that Wolverine doesn't know about, specifically the son of Wolverine. Wolverine does not know that he has a son. Now, of course, this also goes in and it grabs things like Silver Fox. Silver Fox was kind of an on, you know, an, an older standard when it came to the Wolverine comics, hadn't really been referenced for quite some time, and she was never really essential. The only real role she served was kind of like the reason why it is that Wolverine and Sabretooth hate each other so much. So if this was a video on the topic of Wolverine and Sabretooth, then certainly it would be vastly important. But because it's not, because it kind of deals with the early days of Wolverine with regards to him learning about his own past and kind of, you know, consolidating all this information to the realization that his son's alive, Silver Fox was really just kind of a person that Wolverine fell in love with for a while. Sabretooth ended up showing up and taking out Silver Fox. Now, the motivation for why Sabretooth did that will become important later on down the line, especially when we get into the introduction of the character Romulus. But for right now, uh, he was just a person that took out Silver Fox and it kind of engendered a hatred between Wolverine and uh, and, and uh, Sabretooth. Now, of course, you know, Wolverine was overpowered in the experience. He was kind of left for dead and that was really about it. But this kind of led him on the, you know, into this path, led him into the circle of coming across all these various people and sort of set him on the path of becoming part of Team X, the CIA, you know, all those different things like that, you know, kind of bringing all that back together again and, and so on and so forth. But again, with this whole scenario, because of the fact that, you know, Wolverine realizes that he does have a son, his son has been brought into the Weapon X project. His son is basically where Wolverine was however many years ago when he was originally brainwashed and part of that whole system. Wolverine comes to the realization that this is eventually going to boil down to him fighting his son. And so if that happens and he has the Muramasa blade, one of them will use it to kill the other. And so as a result, he hands it over to Cyclops. He simply says, I do not want this blade with me because I do not want to be forced to kill my own son, assuming it comes down to that. Now, of course, this also kind of gets hinted at by Emma Frost that Wolverine's son hates him, which of course, you know, we'll see that later on with the character of Dakin and how all that unfolds. But again, you know, the Wolverine origin stories were very much designed to sort of introduce these small little nuances here and there. Everything will build on everything else. And so we'll go back and we'll reference this first story. We'll reference the story after this. You know, as we get further on down the line, we'll end up finding out that the Wolverine origin line of comics is very important, especially once we get to like Dark Wolverine, the rise of Dakin, the events of Dark Reign, the Dark Era of the X-Men, all those different things like that. It's all going to play a pretty significant role. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.